Thank you for joining us, Minister, and welcome to Breaking Views. In this last sprint to the MDG finishing line of 2015, the conversation on the health of the continent's women and children already seems to be changing to what comes next. Do you think health is being given the priority it deserves on the post-2015 agenda? I think it should be because health is about development, it's about life. There cannot be development on this planet if people are not health healthy. So I think the post-2015 agenda is clear that three things must happen. Firstly, I don't think we'll have completed our agenda on maternal and child health. It's very important for the world. It must go on. Secondly, I think the world must now still deal with this imminent danger of non-communicable diseases, NCDs. If we don't do that, there's going to be trouble. And lastly, the issue of healthcare financing, universal health coverage. This three must form the post-2015 world agenda. To date, we've seen mixed progress across the continent on maternal and child newborn health. Surprisingly, though, some of the poorest countries like Malawi, Ethiopia and Uganda have actually done a significant job in cutting child mortality rates. South Africa has not done so well. Why is this? I think in South Africa, our biggest contributory factor was the problem of HIV and AIDS. As you'll know, we started very late. We could have done better. We started very late. That really caused us problems because you are aware that we started in earnest only after 2009. And uh, already within the past four years, there's already a visible reduction in both maternal and child mortality. The reason is because 49% of maternal mortality in South Africa is attributable to HIV and AIDS. So if your HIV AIDS program was not strong as it was uh, before 2009 in South Africa. We end up in the situation in which we are. We've seen a growth in private health care across the continent. You yourself have taken a very public stand in support of public health care, including the fact that your family uses public health care. Why is this important and why do we need an effective public health care system? I know that in most parts of Africa, the scenario you have described is happening, and it's quite unfortunate, where people believe private health care is the way to go because public health facilities are not doing well. In some areas are collapsing, and that is very dangerous for a continent like Africa because we cannot afford private health care. That must be very clear. So the majority of people on the African continent must rely on public health care, and it's the responsibility of governments on the African continent to make sure that public health care provides good quality, good quality, I repeat, and is affordable. The reason that people want to decide it, they're worried about the quality. What are the consequences of not having a strong public health care system? The consequences is that you'll end up spending a huge percentage of your gross domestic product on health without getting any good results. That will be the consequences. And the human costs? Well, the human cost is that you'll have a huge burden of diseases. And no matter how many doctors and nurses you have got in the hospital, you are not guaranteed of health because prevention is always better than cure. Minister, you've talked about HIV and AIDS and you've been credited with ushering in a new approach to HIV and AIDS in South Africa. What is next? What is the next battle? I think the most important thing we achieved in the past four years was to turn the tide against HIV AIDS, which led to an increase in life expectancy in South Africa, which has been dramatic. We have reduced mother-to-child transmission of HIV AIDS from 8% in 2008 to 2.7% in 2011. We think the 2012 figure is still coming, but I understand from researchers it's going to be much less than that. So we are looking forward to making it less than 1% by 2015. Now, what we are looking for is to see how we achieve the three zeros announced by United Nations AIDS program. You know, the zero deaths from HIV, AIDS, zero deaths from preventable deaths from TB, zero new infections. We are working very fast towards that. So what are the biggest challenges in achieving those three zeros here in South Africa? The biggest challenge already in South Africa is that the HIV program is massive. We are told it's the biggest in the world because we already have 2.1 million people on treatment. So obviously with that large number, you suddenly experience the problem of logistics. 
you must make sure that 2.1 million people receive their drugs every month at the clinic in the hospital. And, and any small mistake with logistics becomes a big problem. And South Africans are very sensitive on that. We have 3,540 public health facilities providing ARVs. Before 2009, it was only 490 facilities. Within four years, we increased them to 3,540. But if any one of them gets a problem, you'll believe it's all of them which, which have either closed down or have got no drugs. It will be all over the radio. It will be in the media. It, it's just like that. So our biggest challenge is never to make a mistake. We tested 18 million people within a period of 15 to 18 months when we launched our HCT campaign. And now our new national strategic plan says every single South African. Now you can imagine when I say all, the logistics to reach everybody to test and know their status, the young, the old, the rich, the poor, the famous, the marginalized, is a very big challenge. But we think we've got no option, we will be equal to the task. People talk now about Africa rising, about the new investment in the continent, the new tone of the conversation. What sort of support is needed from outside? What do we need international development partners to do to help support drive the health agenda on this continent? First of all, I'm one of the people who do not like the fact that in Africa we seem like, you know, every time we're running around with a begging bowl and say, you know, I want us to be self-sufficient. We do need help, of course. We are getting money from Global Fund also in South Africa, but we have pushed very hard that 80% of all the money we're spending in health, fight HIV, STB, must be from our own fiscals, and the other 20% is from international donors, and we would like to maintain that and keep on decreasing that dependency. It's very important. But the second thing that I want the international community to do, Africa is a poor continent, you know that already, with a very low resource base for skills. But the rate at which many rich countries are actually mobilizing health professionals from South Africa, uh, contracting them out of the continent, it's something that I want, it, I mean, I want it to be looked at. It's, it's unfair. The way they are being recruited, and because African countries cannot afford to pay high salaries, it's very easy to recruit doctors and nurses from this continent, which is already, you know, by the way, you are aware that Sub-Saharan Africa has been declared a disaster area in as far as health personnel is concerned. So if they can help us with training rather than recruiting health personnel from here, that would be a good starting point to say, come to my country, bring so many youngsters for training. That would be very good. Know more about your world. ENCA.com